we have started our recording now. When you go to your course site, let's see if I can share Sakan. Um, when you go to your course site, I mean, you log into University of Ghana required course, UGW, whatever, blah, then you get to the course site. You scroll all the way down to Sakai LMS, select that, then it will ask you to key in. Now, when you key in your details, that should open and take you to a Sakai platform, maybe just a, a, an elaboration will help. At the top right corner, if you're using your a laptop, you see the nine dots. Uh, the experts call it the ellipsis, but it helps to say just those nine dots, one, two, three, four, five, nine at the top right corner. On it is written sites, S-I-T-E-S. When you select that, it should open to show you all the courses that you have been registered into. Level 100 are normally registered into courses because you are now coming in, so you don't have choices. You are given, you see. Then you should see all that. Now for UGRC 150, like I've already elaborated, because you, of the numbers of students that take it, it is team taught, a team of lecturers teaching, not one person. So the course site is the mother set, the container, the big container within which all students who have registered or have been registered to take that course are put into. For DE this semester, we have over 2,000 of you. Now, that those 2,000 are split into groups. We cut you to chunks, good chunks, managed chunks, so that one group cannot be 1,000, whilst another is 10 or 100 students, okay? In collaboration with your institution, and we put you all into groups. So your course site is UGRC 150, 30. 30 is for distance, that's the, the number for distance stream. Main campus is one, so you would have seen UGRC 150, one. City campus is four, so you'd have seen UGRC 154. I'm just explaining this so that you help your colleagues, maybe even in future. Okay, Kolebu is three, so it would have been UGRC 153. Now, DE is UGRC 150, 30 on Sakai. For every course there, you see that they will be in 30s. However, because UGRC is in groups, they create group site. Group site is not a course site. The course site is where all of you are put into. Then we, we generate the groups from the course site. So when you have the 30 days, it means you are still in the big basket, yet to be placed into groups. And we kept sending notices and my dear friends were not read. <laughs> Most people were not reading. They were waiting for their notice to get into their email. That's fine, but I beg to differ. You should go to the course site, you go there. You don't let the message come to you. You should go to the course site. So do that for all the courses. UGBS something, go there, select it. Select that particular course. Go to its announcement tool and read the announcement that I've put it, uh, posted for you. From there, you go to the resource tool. Resource, resource will give you course outline. Maybe if there are PowerPoints, there are recorded videos. If there is every information resource that will help your study will be placed in the resource tool. Then there will be that, uh, the overview. It gives you the course outline, what the course is about generally. All of those are tools to the left of Sakai. You should engage them. Even if it's 12 midnight, you have access to it. That's the beauty of it, okay? I have placed your course outlines there. You should engage it. I, I hope that I'm able to take you to briefly and go to the content profile, okay? So if you did that, you would have seen that now we have cut you into what? Six groups. After your, your institution, the units there, your outfit, D, cleared us. We, we don't work with D, we teach with the University of Ghana, but this course is the University of Ghana taught course. So some of the information has to come from your unit to us. That, okay, we have so-and-so number of students. Okay, give us a minute, we'll check this before. We cannot come and say anything until the outfit says. So as soon as the outfit gave us a prompt, I had already told you on the platform, when we get a prompt from them, we will inform you appropriately. And thankfully, here we are. So this is group 33, meaning a distance group, group three of what? The distance, the 33. As at this dawn that we're clear that everybody has been placed into a group, what did we do? We, we, we unpublished the group site, excuse me, the course site. So now you won't see the 30 again. So those who have sent me 117 messages. <laughs> I was at church, my phone kept beeping, ping, ping, ping. When I checked 800 messages, I said, hey, <laughs> well, hey, my group has disappeared. The 30 is gone. The 30 is gone. Hey, are people reading announcements at all? Okay, so I've clarified. And this is recorded. So those who 
want you can share with your police. I'm just saying that to so everybody in DE currently must either be in 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, or 36. If you are in group 30, you are still in the main basket. There's no lecture handling the basket. We are all in our rooms now. The building is a 30. Our rooms are room one, room two, room three. That is where the lectures are going on. So you have to be within a specific group, not the course site. Some two are now registering. So they are yet to even enter the main building, which is the course site. When they do, we will pick them, place them in the group. So inform your friends accordingly. Any questions with Sakai? You can go to the course outline. If you want to Madam, ask them, please question. Go ahead. Go ahead, please. Thank you. And please, I'm Trey okay. Thank you. Madam, please, I still have uh, the one the 30 showing as well as the 33 showing on my side. Uh, please, but have if you I heard you well, you were saying that uh, uh, to your gadget in this. When was the last time you restarted your, your gadget or your machine? I went on that please, I was I was there this afternoon before coming here. Okay, wait. I'm just saying if it, you refreshed it. So maybe you should try that and see if you refresh it and it is still there. It could be that our supply folks haven't uh, have, have a re, what's the expression? They have republished it. But then your focus should be on the group because that is where uh, all information will be. The 30 was confusing people. So I just asked them to take it off crap, totally. Okay. When we unpublish, then I think Sakai has some few challenges then it, it gets published again. So those who do not know feel that they have been placed into two UGRC, one future groups, which is a worrying situation for a fresher who doesn't understand the system yet. So please, even if you see both 30 and 31 or 30 and 34, all those ones, let's focus on the group side. The main concern, which is the 30, will have everybody there. I hope that helps, please. Yes, please, thank you. Thank you, thank you very much. Let me take Lottie, put your hand is up. Just in case you, you don't um, know okay. to raise your hand. Please kindly go to. Madam, uh, was it you? Yes, please. Okay, okay. So you are answered. Thank you. Any other person who wants to raise their hand? We don't want yeah, to. Yeah, me. Me. Yes, lots we don't want to. to. That's fine. We don't want to um, presume too much. So let me take you through that also. So you go to more actions. There's, there's, there are some three dots on the screen on your team screen currently. After the video with this, and there is the mute where the microphone is. That one, I'm sure you know. You should have a three ellipses, something there. You know, when you select that, you should be able to find more actions, I think. Then you can, more actions, then you should, it should show you the hand, you know, then you can raise your hand if you have to. Thank you. Let's take um, Ando. Ando, go ahead. Please. Madam, please, is this group 33 and 34? This is just 33. I'll, I'll hold a 34 session. Also. One of our okay. colleagues will not be able to take you, so I had to. Bear the brand. I'm doing. I'm doing so. <laughs> okay. All right. You. Let's take Ando. Ando, go ahead. You are muted, please. Unmute and let's engage. Yeah. Okay. Um, good afternoon, madam. Good afternoon, um, is, is it that? Yeah. Is it that um, the group names, as in the grouping, um, yeah. are we going to have the same number for all? I'm sorry. I didn't get you very well. Are we going to have the same number for what? Okay, is it going to be the same? I don't know what I do. I can't hear my hello to you. Hello, hello, hello. Yeah, hello, please. Is it clear now? Uh -huh. Yes, it's better now. Uh, oh, okay, thank you very much. I'm saying that is, is your group going to be the same for all the courses? Okay, so for now, I'm speaking to UGRC 150 only. That's the only course I'm speaking about. All your other courses there, you would have to engage uh, the lecturer or the coordinator for that course. Oh, okay. I'm speaking about UGRC 150. It's just one of the peculiar courses. It's not like a department course. It's a university course. So yeah, our, but, uh -huh. but with the explanation as in using the house system, the room thing, I'm, I'm trying to clear uh -huh. that. It's, yes. I'm so, trying to study Go ahead. Sorry. I'm saying that if um you have the 30 and then for some yes. reason you the group, is it that the group that you've been placed, is it going to be the same for uh -huh. the groups are only for UGRC 150? I don't know about academic rights if they are created groups on the site 
on the very course site or they created different groups. You see, we, we can have different groups, but on the same course site, like different beds, but in the same room. That one, it will still remain 30, but for UGRC 150, we created bedroom for a uh, kitchen, you know, and, and then some of the courses are waiting held here. So one is in this room, the other one is another room, the other one is another. Then the main building of course, is empty. Okay, just because with me, I'm, I'm I'm having just um group two as in 32 for one, but not for one. That's what she should have. That's why I was asking Lottie if when when last she checked, you see our phones and some of our gadgets, even if things have happened, you will have to refresh it before it will reflect. That's why I went on, I took off the main site, there's this door. So you should have only the course site. Excuse me, the group site 31, 32, 33 to 36, just that for now. And it is not a problem, don't worry. If you even have both okay, thank you. the main site and the group site, ignore the main site. Sakai people take it off so that you don't get confused. They can follow your lectures consistently until we are done. Oh, okay. thank, right. you. thank you very thank you, much. I think that will be helpful to a lot of people. Can I take uh, Mr. Pops? Then I'll take uh, Lady Reverend Baba. Mr. Pops. Um, Yes, thank you very much. Uh, I'd want to find out, I am not in group 33 or 34. My yes. group um, crashed it with my face-to-face -face on campus. Is it okay if I take any class? You can take any of them. I think I communicated that clearly in the announcement to help you. We won't, okay. you won't lose anything. The clashes will happen because you have only the weekend. So there will be classes. Yeah. So the links are for interaction, but you have to engage the content that is uploaded for you, the recorded lecture and the test. Then the interactions, you can you can engage your various, whichever interactive session works fine. Okay, and the textbook, does it come at a cost? Yes, it's a, the investors book, it's 50 cities, five years. It was 30 cities previously, but uh, the, the people who published it doubled the price. So the, the price is off the way. Who is fifty cities five zero? That is that is. Okay. Uh, we don't have enough actually, so <laughs> the war is. But we pray that we are able to get set all of you because main campus folks are also picking from that, and they just started. Now we are good. All right, thank you, Mr. Pop. The, 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 the textbooks are the same as the uh, PDF, right? I won't be able to tell. I have not sanctioned the PDF. I have not seen it. Okay. Uh -huh. okay. But the textbooks okay. are the required text. That one I know. So maybe you can check when if you think it is well. You lady Reverend, take your question. Please unmute it. Please, you are muted now. So if you could unmute. If not, then we, we go on quickly. Okay. Yeah. yeah, we can hear you now. Thank you very much, Doctor. Um, Thank you. To encourage you. We really appreciate I'm listening to you to know you can have 800 messages that you go into. But I think I'm one of the people that sent you an email. Get to be able to find. I just want to say please, please, if you just raise your voice a little, just a little. If you could raise the volume of your gadget just a little bit, I'll be fine. Is it okay now? Please, is it okay? okay. Okay, I'll manage. Please speak. Yes. Please, put it okay now. Ah, now I can hear you. Yes, please. Yes. So, Dr. Nancy, I'm just saying that thank you very much. I'm listening you. to you to find out that you have to respond to over 800 messages at a go. And yes. we just want to say from the DE students everywhere thank that we appreciate the effort. Oh, thank and you. Are going to come and fly by the yes. Thank you. Thank you so much, madam. We do our best with you. Yes and all. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, so I think the, with the uh, ground rules cleared, we can quickly now launch into content. For those from in my groups and anyone who wants to, I sent a link also, a YouTube link that will take you to an academic channel that I created when we had to go online. That channel has all recordings on the various units and interactive sessions that I've even had with students of the course. 
of course, if I say meet me Monday for this or we we'll meet at so and so time, it will not be directed at you because I will be referencing that specific class. But the content itself on unit one, unit two, unit three, you can engage that to help you understand. They are all there, they are accessible there. Yeah, someone manages that for you. So I think when you go to that channel and then you go to playlists, you get UGRC 150. Go to that one because I do philosophy too, so there is philosophy of classics 201. 102, 307, 304, so that I don't get all the Socrates and Plato bothering you. But you can focus on the UGRC one. It's the same textbook that the university has used for a So we reference the same content. Ignore the administrative referencing and focus on the content itself. And you should do fine. We will still engage everything as if we, you never saw it anymore. But just so that you don't feel overwhelmed. So I thought I should put that also. All right, now to our topic one. We'll do that alongside the course outline. What is critical thinking? I sent the video, so I know some of you have engaged it. You had all the elaborations. You can play it back all the time. We need to be equipped to think critically about matters, regardless of the discipline we are in the university to study or to be trained in. We may be studying economics, business, nursing, what have you. But we have to make critical decisions all the time. That is why the investor says, you have to pass a course in thinking critically and reasoning practically before you graduate. We don't care even if you are very good, so good in your very chosen field and you don't have the requisite knowledge in this course, you won't be allowed to graduate. It's so unfair, but that is the truth. We have people in the system, unfortunately, that haven't been able to leave because they haven't either passed this one or academic right or the UGRCs, you know. So why do we have to necessarily take this course and pass? If you play the lecture, then you will know that I give several examples, few of which I will touch on. We need to be able to communicate the knowledge we acquire to people. We need to be able to think through how to communicate that. We need to be able to make judgments of situations and respond to those situations in a useful manner. The, the situations we talk about should be practical. We are not talking abstraction. So if you look at the nature of the course, a critical thinker is equipped, is trained to learn to do or suspend their judgment about a claim until they have a certain degree of confidence with which they can now accept it or reject. It's a training we give you to be able to hold on with your judgment of a situation, your judgment of a, a degree, your, your judgment of a certain fate your judgment of a certain culture, a certain group of people. Judgment here means your assessment of a situation before you make a decision. So that that decision is not that you just want to slow down, but you want to make sure that the decision you are making is dealing with a practical problem of existence. So when I give reasons why I support a certain claim, then you are able to assess the grounds for that reason that I have given. You assess it you, to see if I am justified in holding that claim. Therefore, you will see that the course called critical thinking is topic neutral. It is neutral to the topic. We don't care what discipline it is, which discussion we are having. We can use the skills, the tools, the techniques we are going to learn in this course to apply there. It is neutral to the topic. We don't care which topic it is that we are discussing. I'll ask you that, friends. So please study it well. Why would you consider critical thinking or logic as what? A topic neutral to? Well, logic applies in medicine, applies in law, it's in the military. If you play my, my, my video, you should have examples of how you have to make a decision. And the medicine you study doesn't help you at that time. You know your staff as a medical practitioner. But you have to make a decision. Will you tell a lie? 
to say you need to disclose your patients, you know, uh, personal information to his compatriot that he came with. Who doesn't want to tell her the truth? They are a couple. So if you don't tell the truth now, the guy will infect their sister and she will die with the same sickness that the guy has. But if you go and disclose it to without clearance from the guy, you are disclosing, uh, you know, information that is private to the patient. You are not allowed to do that. What do you do? Either way, trouble. You tell a lie to save a life faster. Lady Reverend, don't get, don't, don't, <laughs> don't get worried at all. We, we, we stand at the same place, so don't worry. <laughs> Would you tell a lie? Uh -huh. Would you tell a lie to save a life? The woman has come to your house. My husband is beating me too much. The baby is beating me. It's after me. You hide me. Before you say, oh, but you have to go to the police station. The woman has hidden me. Then the man comes. I'm in trouble. It's my wife there. You tell the truth. This guy will be the Abusram. He's totally drunk. You don't tell a lie. Hey, excuse me. You don't tell the truth. You are lying. What says that shall not lie? Oh, look. <laughs> it's that one. It's not that's not the time to go and start catabrowing you. The brother will slap you. you. Have to make a decision. Life is full of practical decisions. You move from there to the hospital, you will find some. You move from there to the military. Will you shoot? Obey before complain. You say shoot before you. the your supervisor says shoot. You say, I'm going to find out if the anger. When you check the anger, he says you should shoot. It will kill innocent children sitting there. Look at Ukraine and Russia. But you are supposed to obey before complain. Oh, if I shoot, only two children be there. That anger, if I shoot, nobody there, people there, they don't even look dangerous. Well, perhaps if you don't, there's a hidden uh, bomb somewhere there. It's going to come off. And the whole city will, will, will be destroyed from that bomb, including those two innocent children. And maybe if you shoot now, it will kill those two. Go for video. But then it will save us and we'll quickly go and, go and remove that bomb. Perhaps if you knew that, wouldn't you shoot? That has nothing to do with the training you have undergone as what? As a, a shooter, a sniper, so to speak. I'm saying all this to show you that we, we are faced with life situations, real practical situations that our theories we are learning in school will not be able to deal with if we don't engage this course, which teaches us how to examine the claims people are making how they are supporting those claims, whether they are committing fallacy. Don't go and bring a woman from that place to this home. We, we, don't, we don't marry from there. You say, why? That says that those people, do they ever take care of their wife? These people, so oh, all those people there, how many people from X place, they don't take care of their wife. That is a big fallacy that that is committed. That he loves you, that he has your interest at heart, but he's committing a policy. How many of those people has he met? He might be advising, so the advice is good, but they claim that as for those people, he be so them day. Uh, the, the people from here, that's how they are. That kind of language puts everybody supposedly from that place in that box. You don't allow for people to reason about specifics. What if this is an exception? What if we were wrong all this while? We want people to be able to suspend their judgment, examine the premises. There comes the technical way, take note how that's you. Examine the premises people offer in support of what the conclusions they draw. So I've introduced two technical ways in logic. Premises leading to what? A conclusion. The two together form what? An argument. Critical thinkers like yourself and I learn how to examine the premises offered to support the conclusions drawn by people. We examine it to see if the premises give us enough grounds to accept the conclusions drawn. Where there are not enough grounds, we check to see if the person committed a fallacy. Fallacy just means what? Wrong use of language, committing error in the way you are reasoning. So now you know three technical words. Premises, fallacy, conclusion. Even a fourth one is what? Argument. When you have premises leading to a conclusion, we say you have what? An argument. Argument is not exchange, of course. We are not beating ourselves. Okay. So the, the, tech, the critical thinker is equipped with tools for this work. Which work? The work of what? Diagnosing, trying to investigate, to find out that if you gave me these reasons, would it mean that I should accept the conclusion you have drawn? 
the litmus test for that. How do I test to find out that if it were true that them, she's the last person who left the room yesterday? So I conclude that therefore she stole the laptop. We are looking for a missing laptop. Then the security man said, Boss, Madam, please, oh, when you close the office yesterday, you left. The last person who left the building was uh, your, your TA. He left the building, passed the bag there. So make you ask him the laptop that you are looking for to be with you. That is an issue, practical office management issue. You don't learn that one as part of management. So the security man tells you that. Will you just ask them to call your GA and sack him? Or you start investigating him? If he's the last person who left the room, does this give us enough grounds to therefore conclude that he stole the laptop? Perhaps we have a starting point, but we do not have a justification yet because the security man himself is a suspect. Even I, the one who claims my laptop is missing, I'm a suspect to them because people steal their own laptops. So people will do contribution for them to go and buy a new one so that senior housemistress doesn't come and gain us in the room. A critical thinker is therefore equipped to analyze. Please look at my screen. I'm trying to share alongside. You are equipped to analyze statement, analysis. You break them down. That's what analysis means. I'm very conscious of the class I'm teaching. Eh? We are thinking about school to school. <laughs> Rent in the So we are taking our time. I want to believe that we have a lot of mature students. So we will learn at our own pace. By the grace of God, we do fine. So please follow me. I have introduced about four so called technical terms, but I, I want to believe we have grasped them. I'm building on it. Critical thinkers are equipped with a skill of analysis. And I'm saying analysis means breaking down into what? The many details, the constituent parts. You are equipped with that skill. So if I tell you that women are bad, Apologies, eh, sisters. <laughs> we just celebrated International Women's Day. If someone says, as for women, that is how they are. If someone is sitting by, sister is sitting by intention and asks the brother, does that include your mother? Do you see how the sister may take a slap of the brother? <laughs> Why are you talking about my mother like that? Then the question is, but you said that is how women are. Women. When you say that is how women are, you are speaking about women of all times, all places, born already, yet to be born. Those who are, uh, you know, well endowed, front and back. Those who are slim. Those who are, you are talking about all women, including your mother. You said it, not the, the girl who is who is standing to ask you. You yourself said it by the language. When you break it down, if you say some politicians are corrupt. Jamie, some politicians are corrupt. Then a politician calls me and says, you, you, why do you like saying that thing about us? <laughs> you have to ask the fine politician that, oh, but I said some. Why are you forcing yourself to be part of those? Some? When I say some politicians are, some lecturers are, some pastors are, some means there are exceptions. So you do not force yourself to belong to that set. By you have to analyze what the person is saying. Be a beam, open it out, and you know we learn that in this course. The skills that we are equipped with give us that. And evaluation, the skill of evaluation, judging. Okay, I've said that also already. I build on it. If you have a question as I go, can you raise your hand? I'll see it. I'll pause and take it because you have heard all these in the recorded lecture. I'm just highlighting very important things to set you off very well. So you will see that the aim of critical thinkers is to inquire, analyze, evaluate, judge, ultimately to do what? To deal with practical problems of existence. So perhaps we need a critical thinker to engage the issue at home there, mommy and daddy fights, or perhaps uh, Russia, and Ukraine. If you were the United Nations Secretary General right now, this is a problem that has to be engaged. Who is diagnosing what is the problem? What actually is the, the bone of contention? Is it that someone is just there and wants to just blast people and finish them? Perhaps not, perhaps. So. Or is it a bypassing that is going on and someone is being defensive? 
We need critical thinkers to sit up and do that. Otherwise, human beings will, will, will just die and perish like this. Now, all of these ultimately will do what? You see all this already. I've gone through this in my video, so I'm not for that. Topic neutral is also on the screen. You have seen all of this. Now, I want to see slide 10. So look at this. The skills we will give you by the grace of God, they are what? Open-mindedness. We all have it already, but we'll polish it. You know, we all polish our shoes, but we are not all shoe maker people, shoe shine. But we polish more shoes. So we all have one or two of these skills that we work with. But this discipline is committed to that. That is what it will do for you. It's important that you get it from start. So that when we start doing unit six, I do modus ponens, modus tollens, hypothetical syllogism, disjunctive syllogism, causal reasoning, we do post hoc, ego propter hoc, all those things in units. <laughs> when we start doing argumentum at popular, but fallacy is unit 10. You should see that they are all the ingredients. Don't worry, you 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 will come and tell me. You master the content. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> no fears, Clara. Don't worry. You master it. Then you remember the lecture one that we had together. That the aim of giving you all those tools is for what? For you to solve problems of what? Existence, whether in medicine, culture, marriage, church. You want to be a good evangelist? You have to be a communicator. It's not. It's not fighting. You don't fight the people. Communicate. A certain child at home has become a recalcitrant child. He's not listening to anybody. Don't worry, critical thinking. Get the tools. You will see that after all, it wasn't that the child didn't want to listen. They are rather not listening to the child. Perhaps, perhaps, okay? So we will give ourselves those tools and hope that we are able to negotiate some of life's problems as academics, as academics who are learning with that in mind, okay? So those are the backgrounds. So open-mindedness, you should be able to work with everyone regardless of their background, where they are coming from. Perhaps they are even better able to get converted and join, whether religiously or, or culture or political party. I could win someone from one party to the other. By the way, I carry myself, or by my communication, or by the effectiveness of my argument. You see, not fighting. OK, you, we grow the inquiring mind in you. We, we are never satisfied with, oh, that's how we do it here. Critical thinkers, no. They are very humble, but very firm, very resolute when they are convinced about something. We train our academics to be like that. So when you say you have a University of Ghana degree, <laughs> the degree must show. Not that you are overconfident, no. But when you step in that place, office, marketplace, you are projecting a policy, you are marked for excellence. When you finish, you make an impact. You don't, you don't go and impress people, though. not impress, impressive speech, empty content after all the enthusiasm, no. You impact people. So if it is, uh, you are a marketer, you want to market a product, by the time you finish, the people are happy with the product. If they have genuine concerns, they will show you that, that this one is fine. Let's have this side, let's decide this side. If you could do this and that about it, it means you made an impact. Not, Antinez, please, what is wrong with my heart? You say you have a stereoscope, scopulous, something, something of the highest order. And you are speaking to, like I said in the recorded, a grandpa, uneducated, formally. You see, grandpa be sitting just. His heart, he wants to know what is wrong with his heart. You killed him with your steroids or whatever. When you can just tell him, it's just a little enlargement. It's like the heart is a little larger than it should be. So we can we can help you, but we will keep you here for some days, okay? And Auntie and Sister Adra will always come and see you. We will all be here. We will all be here to take care of you. I'm saying the same thing. I'm communicating truth to Grandpa. But I am not impressing him with my theoretical definitions of uh, tripandosomiasis of the highest order of 1678 uh, clu, 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 or What is this? Who cares about that? When you meet your colleagues who are also experts in the field, talk that way, it will be meaningful. So we'll learn you need to definitions, making meaning. Perhaps the child is not eating, 
pediatrician. And the, the child is not eating. Not because he doesn't want to eat. The food sits in the bowl like <laughs> mountain apajado. The banku is sitting in the plate, boom. The soup is sitting by it, boom. The child doesn't want to eat. <laughs> Maybe you cut it into some nice like chunks, some triangle, if it's fancy cake. Some, <coughs> sorry, some triangle, some square. It's boring and tiresome. But you take the triangle and say, you pick the square. Let's see the one who finish first. We all dip it into this. We swallow. The child will eat. You have to think critically about what they are and blows. Who are, if you don't eat, I'll kill you today. Look at the one we saw on TV the last time, the very unfortunate one, where the caregiver was forcing food down the baby's throat. To that, I saw it. I don't know if it's true. You see, very, very heart wrenching. Perhaps the caregiver wants to finish and go and sweep. So eat the food and let's go. There's no time for all this. Make meaning. Let the child brush his or her teeth with meaning. You do it with joy. Brush it, pasty black. Can you get some pinky brush for that girl and tell her you are going to have a pinky brush? And let's see if she will not brush four times a day so your paste gets finished. Someone must think. That's all I'm, I'm saying. So from home to those two people who, who have never talked since they came, the man says the wife likes argument. That, the husband says the wife talks too much. The girl says, hey, I argue to bring stuff home. If we go and the business people see the way I make my case, they are impressed. She's using the word argument. In a positive light. Hmm? Then the brother says, you talk too much. Interpret argument to mean what? Talking too much. So one person says argument means you improve, you are able to convince people. So they come and buy the product, maybe business parties. Another person thinks argument means disputing. So the two of them say, oh, argument, you like argument. The other person says, you don't know how to argue. It's called equivocation. We'll see it. Someone has to see the two of them die and say, when you say argument, you mean something positive or negative. So the psychologist amongst you, when the, pay, the client comes to you, sometimes you don't even have to start engaging your content. You have to critically analyze the problem that is sitting before you. And then you start giving what? Practical problems of existence based on your diagnosis, your judgment, then you proffer solutions. You have to be a critical thinker. And the schools, uh, the, 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 the skills and the tools will give you. So all the things on the screen, open-mindedness, inquiry, mind, analytic skills, evaluative skills, communicative skills, should be a part of you by the grace of God after the program. And that will lead you to what? Effective speaking, sound reasoning, conceptual clarity. The church says we are a family church. Uh, the political party says we, we are a social democrat party or a liberal, whatever, property owning democracy. That is a concept you hold. Be clear. If you say it's a family church, then after church, everybody has gone to sit in Jakarta and they're going. Is that how families live? Clarify the concept that you claim you are. Are we doing democracy? I've entered into politics now. If it is democracy, then what does it mean for us? If you're a policy maker, you take that up. If the mandate is to do X, Y, or Z, the concept has come. Clarify that. You need a critical thinker to ask critical questions. University of Ghana says our motto is what? Integrity procedamus. The correct pronunciation, I'm told by the Latin was procedamus. The C is C. Integrity procedamus. We are progressing in what? Integrity. That is the concept. It should be very clear and it should be caught up by anybody that passes through the system. Clarity, we teach that, we enforce that. It's a tool we equip you with. Then you're able to recognize, diagnose, and solve problems for the work environment and also work every day. All the rest I have taken you to. Now we can go to unit one, unless there's a question. So when we take unit one, unit two, definitions, unit three, types of discourses, arguments, narrative, what have you, Unit four won't come. It just shows you how to navigate. I've said that over and over again, the courses. So it's not a content you study to be examined on. So don't bother your head over unit four. Then unit five, laws, empirical laws, 
normative laws, what have you. You go to unit six, deduction and induction. That is technical, that's heavy material, but you can, you can negotiate it if you make an effort at it already. So get a test, get a slide, study it, and don't overwhelm yourself as you read. Just be confident that I told you that you can weather this one easily. But you have to commit to consistent study. That's why I have stressed, get the book or be by your slides or engage the video all the time. But unit six, I want to warn you, it's heavy. Unit seven, also heavy. Uh, inductive reasoning in everyday life. Then unit eight won't come. We, don't, we won't examine you in unit eight because then you have too much to learn. So unit four won't come, unit eight won't come. We still have some causal fallacies in unit nine that will help us fill in the inductive reasoning between. So nine, then unit 10, and you are finished. Unit 10 deals with fallacies, examples of errors in reasoning that is common in our everyday life. I just took you through the course outline without going through the specific details. I know them offhand. Any questions? Then we can go to content one. Please, if you have any questions, raise your hand. I'm glad to respond to it. All right. So on the screen, we have sentences that shape our thought. Sentence shape thought. Whenever we speak, we have an intention in mind that we are trying to bring out. We have started showing you the tools for critical thinking. I, I did the introduction for you now. So I'm starting with content proper, the tools, the skills, the techniques, the methods that you are able to, uh, you use to be able to what? Investigate, examine, evaluate how people are grounding their claims, what? With evidence. That's what critical thinking is. We equip you with tools to help you examine how people are supporting their faith, their beliefs, their convictions, that they are supporting it. What? With what evidence? That is what the course is about. So I'm introducing you now to the tools. We are starting from one, unit one, all the way to unit 10. And I'm saying that when people speak, they have an intention in mind though, that they are trying to bring out. So if I knocked on your door and I said, what is the time? I'm expecting you to give me what? Information. And I say, what is the time? I want to know what the time is. So I want you to tell me the time is five o'clock. I am asking for information. So that type of sentence shaped thought is called interrogative. You know already. Question asking. Asking question. So it's interrogative. Don't we take people to the police station? We interrogate them. We ask them questions. So that is one type of what sentence that shape our thought. It shapes what is inside our head. We bring it out through what the language. One type is what interrogative. The same name for interrogative is question. Another type of sentence that shapes our thought is what imperative. Just understand. You see, when you understand, you see that you don't have to do too much work. Because in Shasian world, is there, you are just left with picking the words. Imperative. Sometimes when I speak with you, the intention is not to, for you to give me information. I want you to do something. That is why I'm speaking to you. Sometimes when I speak to you, I want you to perform an action. So if I say stand up, stand up. I want you to do. So the intention I, the speaker, I have in mind is for you, the hearer, to perform an action. See, so that expression which requires of the hearer to act, to perform an action, is called an imperative. Imperative. You have seen all of those in the video already. Imperative. Example of an imperative is stand up. Another name for imperative is command. You see that requests. Imperative. It has another name. Don't get confused. That another name is what? A request or a command. It could be an instruction or a directive. You can see that all these labels I have outlined 
require the hearer to perform an action. That's why it is imperative. So you know interrogative, you know imperative. And they are saying names. If you look on the screen, you see I said, look at the fourth point on the screen. As for take off your cap, raise your hand, pass me the check. They are straightforward imperatives. There's no contention about them. But look at the fourth one. Could you direct me to the library, please? Could you direct me to the library? If I saw you on the street, on, on Legon campus, I see, I tell you, hello, brother, could you direct me to the library, please? Or could you direct me to the library? Or the brother turn and look at me and say, yes, I could, <laughs> and be looking at me. No, I didn't ask for information. <laughs> Even though I spoke as if I'm looking for information, because I asked it. <clears throat> I asked a question. But look at the intention of the question. It's not a genuine question. It's not a genuine question. Because I wanted him to do, to perform an action. Let me see that. I wanted him to perform an action. I said, could you direct me to the library, please? That is why this one, because it comes with a question mark explicitly, it is interrogative, but implicitly, it is what? Imperative. So the implicit, the implicit means the hidden meaning. The hidden meaning is what will be captured. It, it implies what? Imperative. This can be a very genuine question that we ask you. We could ask you to tell us what the implicit meaning of the expression below is. Then you say, could you direct me to the library? Question mark. And if people are not tutored critically, they will say, oh, this is a question. Could you pass me the checkbook? It is an imperative. When you hear that, you, you will pass the checkbook. You will say, yes, I could pass you the check. <laughs> so that is the point. So you know, interrogative, imperative. We want to go to the next one, declarative. A declarative is a sentence shaped thought. That word gives information. It gives you information. Interrogative, the first one, seeks information from you. Imperative tells you to do. Declarative informs you. That is, it conveys information to you. So if I say, my mother is in the room. It is seven o'clock. Today is Monday. On the screen, you see some examples I put there. Then your textbook gives you so many, so many of them for your practice. Ghana has a new speaker of parliament. The bachelor is sitting under the tree. The bachelor has a good conscience. All those examples you see on the screen are giving you what information because it is conveying information. Note the information can be either true or false. So a declarative alone has the capacity of being what either true or false. That is what we say. It has a truth value. You have seen that also. When I say what is your name, you won't say true to that. How would I? We say false. No, we don't say that. So. Interrogatives and imperatives do not have a truth value. Only declaratives, look at the same name for declarative statement. It is also called proposition, also called assertion. Look at me alone. I'm called Nancy, I'm called Miles, I'm called Bafo, I'm called JMP, I'm called Ama, and the one that is hidden. <laughs> they are all my names. So if you know declarative and you go into the possible answers, and you don't find declarative there, but statement is sitting there. It's the same thing. If you don't see statement and you see proposition, it is the same or assertion. That's what I'm trying to show us all. So you should know the main three types of what? Linguistic expressions or three types of sentences that shape our thoughts. Imperative, interrogative, declarative. We have done the three. So if I say, where is the rice in school? Please tell me which type of sentence she, oh, I saw, I missed the two hands, sorry. When I say, where is the rice in stew? I'll take Belinda and Irene shortly. How will you label it? Which type of 
sentence shape thought or speech act would that be? A speech that is capturing our action. Where is the right sense to? Please raise your hand if you have an answer for me. Where is the right sense to? Okay, now Judith. Interrogative. Interrogative. Very good, now nah. That's correct. Thank you very right. much. Thank you. You're welcome. You. If I say, now to the class again, if I say, give me my rice and stew. Where's the umbanza? How would you label that? Give me the rice and stew. Where's the rice and stew? Wisdom, you are muted. Now, oh, wisdom. Imperative. Yes. Imperative, very good. How about if I say the rice and stew was delicious? Melinda, I can do it. I'm going to make the papa. The rice and stew was delicious. Melinda. Uh, uh. And that is uh, the creative. Very good. Yes. You are all correct. Very good. Now, what about if I just said rice and stew? <laughs> if I say rice and stew, I come and stand and I say rice and stew. So you, you ask, what has rice and stew done? You see, I'm not selling rice. If I'm maybe selling rice and yam and some other dishes, and I come and stand and I say rice and stew, even that you ask me, what has it done? I mean, will you buy some or you just came to compliment my rice and stew? The point is, if we just say rice and stew, we don't know where to place it under the three main types of what? Declare, eh, excuse me, three main types of sentences that she can say. The three main types of speech acts. We don't know where to place rice and stew. So we will say it is an incomplete sentence. Complete sentence. Very good. That's why we call it sentence fragments. fragments. Yeah. So it's a fragment of a sentence. Now, you know what happens? Sometimes people say statement fragments. <laughs> That's a tautology. I just muted up. That is a total. You can't say it is a statement yet a fragment. If it's a statement, it's complete. A certain type of uh, uh, speech act, clarity, it's a statement. It's a complete sentence of a certain type. So we don't say statement fragment. Look out for that. We say it is a fragment of a sentence. A sentence is just a collection of words. That includes questions, interrogatives, all the others we've done. But a statement is a special type of sentence. A statement is with a declarative. The special type, which one is that? The one that gives information and therefore has a truth value, can be either true or false. That is statement. So we know interrogative, imperative, declarative, and we know how we can call all of them differently. We have just added sentence back. In my video, I said this also. What about if Barca scores a goal, Barcelona? Messi has left us, so nowadays I'm not too happy. But I've heard that some uh, uh, some brother has come. He's also doing well. <laughs> uh, Mickey, what's the name of that? Ansu Fati. <laughs> I've heard Ansu Fati who is doing wonders there. And Messi has gone to some PSG boring team. PSG is a boring team. Nobody should say anything. I am my power and that's mom in casa. Nobody should say so. <laughs> okay. But, but if Messi goes to school, and I'm so excited. I'm yes, please. Please, I thought uh, apart, uh, from the, we, we have escalatory tree too. Yes, I'm going there. Escalatory tree. I'm going there. Okay. Uh -huh. I'll help you on that one. So I'm saying that when Messi scores a goal, and I'm so happy, you see, I shall go. Where will you place that? I'm not asking you a question. I'm no. not giving you information. Emotive. <laughs> exactly. I'm not giving you information. I am not uh, interrogating you. I'm not asking you to do or requesting of you to do anything. And it is complete. Go. I finish. Not that it's a fragment. I finish expressing myself. I just express what my emotions. I feelings about something. So someone is sleeping on the staircase and the person is Aji. That is an emotive expression. Wow. Like you step out of your room and see some 
you know, brother B or sister B in some red, gold, green color, makeup, red, gold, green, you know, not that Ghana is going to play a match. <laughs> Shoe red, yellow, tie green, belts, yellow. What does it? Mm. You are finished. Mm. That's emotive expression. <laughs> Sometimes the gele no is scary. Some people's gele is very pronounced, ostentatious. Ah, the front opening crowd, the gate, you can't open it to enter. Very good. And say, wow. That's emotive expression. That's it. So I'm, I'm showing you how we capture our thoughts in language. And with all these examples, you are spot on. So my, my dear sister, who is an adjective, Exclamations. When I exclaim with the exclamation sign, the one with the dot under, you are likely going near what emotive expression. On that note, I think your recorded lectures make a lot of sense to most of you now. So look at uh, declaratives on the screen. That is emotive expression and sentence fragment. Currently, you have sentence fragments. If only I had known, had I known. I don't know what would have happened. If you don't bring me the water, eh? if you don't bring me the water, what? <laughs> Morning dew, what has it done? It's not complete. The Dean of Students in the University of Ghana is very long, but it's incomplete. It's a fragment. All these are fragments. There, there are nice examples in your text. You see the flight lieutenant, JJ Rollins, and the beautiful first lady of Ghana. What have they done? That is longer than let there be light. Why will you please let there be light, please? If I said let there be light. I see hands up. Muaz, Irene and Regina, take your question shortly. Muaz, let there be light. What is it? Why will you place it under the speech act? Interrogative. Let there be light. Which one did you say? Emotive expression. Let there be light. <laughs> interrogative, interrogative. Interrogative. Madam, declarative. Declarative. You see the way of the sentence. Declarative. Declarative, madam. Imperative, madam. Imperative. Imperative, madam, because it is correct. Imperative. It's imperative. Yes, it's imperative. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, some people want to be keeping before finishing. It's got some kids, right? It's in work for you, for you. Everything was okay. Yes. I like to send my answers along with questions if we do objectives. Let there be light. I'm telling you that people from the land. Imperative. That's what God told the situation. I mean, it's imperative. He commanded. Thank you very much. Let me speak now. So that your recording will be good. Okay. He commanded the situation. He instructed the situation. Listen. Mm. So when you hear, let there be light, it means switch on the light, let the light come. So can you know? You know, sometimes I tell my students all that I'm sure you would have heard it in the video. Sometimes we don't speak to the situation. We don't command the situation. Children of God. <laughs> we don't do that. We complain about it. Hey, so this course I'm going to do, uh, hey, this course, how will I manage it with the children? Hey, four children. And then I say, do you manage so very tired? I say, I don't care. Hey. How are we going to manage some questions, emotions, no statements, no commands. Command the situation. Speak to the situation. Hey, critical thinking. Enter my head. Enter. Then you are doing your part. Hmm? Then the thing will work because it will hear. And, and I mean, if you say stand up, even we, you and I, human beings who have our will, we are able to even. Uh, Listen to command. When they say stand up, we stand. Sit down, you sit. Then inanimate things, things that don't have will, they are not agent. They will listen. But we don't command the thing. Let there be is a command. It's an imperative. I'm glad I asked. So good. If you go through the, the several examples in your text, you get so many. Then those that you feel are confusing, are tutor. Yeah. Yeah, Mr. Peter J. We also engage you. We will be coming concurrently so that you have different perspectives on it. You ask your questions clearly. Don't come and let the person do all their job for you. You have done it and you find a problem and not. It's simple. Then you want someone to help you untie the knot. That is how you learn. Not that you are not learning, you are not reading, you are not, you don't even know where the course is. 
there is no book. Don't know. When they say critical thinking, you are thinking academic writing. And you have missed everything. And he said, Charlie, so they're going, Charlie, if I don't want to help you, Charlie, you know, why I'm going? No, no. You do your bit. When you encounter a challenge, then you, you engage them and they are there to help you. They are all there to help you. Okay, so that was an example to help them. Thank you for your patience. This acts if it is not gone. I'm muted, so you may have to unmute. I see Regina too. There are questions. Or whoever has a question and is ready, please just unmute and act. I'll clarify that we can go on. Okay, so it, there is no question yet. Let's finish quickly. Hello, finish. madam. Yes, please go ahead. Okay. Dr. Nancy. Yes, Nancy. So please, in place of the um, sentence fragment, you yes. see an incomplete thought. Is it the same thing? If you say an incomplete thought, yes, I would want you to say incomplete sentence. Oh, okay. Uh -huh. You okay. can have a sentence, a statement. It's complete, but the thought behind it is not complete. Oh, so okay. we shouldn't bother ourselves going through the details of that. Just saying incomplete sentence and be safe. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Yo, you are welcome. So on the screen now, we move quickly to our next slide. This is the motive expression. See some example. Hey, who the hell do you think you are? <laughs> and then the sister says, hey, I'm the, I'm the uh, president of Obama. Hey, Sasa, president of Obama. <laughs> I'm the president of America. Hey, you have crossed somebody. The person says, hey, who the hell do you think you are? You should read the intention. I was also you should start driving your car. Move. Because the guy is getting emotional. He's not asking for a response. The person is venting out an opinion. Don't look at the question mark by it. And then you assess the situation wrongly. The person says, hey. Sometimes they don't even start with hey. They just say, who do you think you are? You are the boss or you are the sister or something. The person says, who do you think you are? Pick your bag and move. Or tell them, oh, calm down. Because the intention is not for you to answer. Do you know who I am? Do you know why? When you hear that thing, the person doesn't want you to say, oh, but who do you think you are? No. <laughs> Read the thought from what you speak. So I think that we can, these ones are straightforward. Wow, brilliant, awesome, bravo. They are emotions. They are emotions. All right. No questions. Now we want to, I'm just adding one tiny little bit, and I'm sure that your afternoon will be sorted for your unit one. When we talked about declaratives, which are also called what? What's that? Give me two, two other names, or if you like, three other names for declaratives. Elliot, Nana, Ampon. You can give me one, then someone else will give another. I want to engage the class. So another name for declarative is what? Right, Elliot. Statement. Thank you, statement. That was Regina, right? Let me yes. this. Jessica, what's another name for declarative, which is also called, Regina says it's also called statement. It can still have two other names, at least from our slides. Preposition. Assertion, very good. Then the last one, all of us, proposition. proposition. Very good, proposition. So we don't care which of them we use. We are referring to the same thing. Going forward, I'll be talking statement, statement, statement. I'm referring to that specific type of sentence, which is what? Which has a truth value, the one we call declarative earlier. That's what I mean when I say statement. That is, it informs you, so it can be either true or false statement. Now, if we were in class, I would have used volunteers. I do that all the time. I think it helps our understanding then whether this one can be. I would have asked one sister to stand up and another to stand up. Then you ask the two sisters standing. Person A is taller than person B, true or false. And depending on the situation, you see the whole class will have a chorus answer, maybe true, or we will all say false. I mean, the answer will be objectively so because taller than someone, if two people are standing, and one is taller than the other. It is not a matter of who asked for me, even though this one is six feet and this one is three feet, I still think the three feet person is taller than 
<laughs> there's this feedback. We all laugh at you and say you don't understand taller than. We just have to give you the meaning of taller than, and you'll be fine. So taller than is not a subjective matter. It's not something based on my point of view or your point of view. No, if I'm comparing two objects, taller than is not dependent on how I'm feeling this morning because I'm pregnant. With you. I am not pleased. I finished giving birth already. <laughs> but I'm saying that bitter, if I say the yogurt is bitter, it can depend on whether I have malaria, for example, or I, I just ate orange or something. But taller than is pure, even if my, my excuse me, I have poor eyesight. Taller than is not a matter of me. I think this person is taller than or this girl, she left me yesterday. She damned me. She was my girlfriend. She has damned me. So now she has become shorter than me. No, no, no. It's not an a subjective matter. However, friends, if I said a, pe a person A is more beautiful than person B, then that is a contentious matter. It will depend on what I con consider to be what beautiful. So the one speaking will be prescribing what he or she thinks beauty is. The person is not describing what is there. Take note of the words. If I said she is beautiful, Adwa is more beautiful than Mansa. I, the speaker, I am prescribing, prescription. Before you even look, before you write at all, prescription. Before you write, script is to write, eh? Prescription. Before you write anything at all, you already have your version of what beauty is. That's what you are doing. So when I look at the two people, I say, Adwa is more beautiful than Mansa. It is I, the speaker, that I am imposing my conception of beauty onto the two of them. Beauty is not in the object. It is in the one observing. Taller than is in the object, not me. Whether I see it or I don't see it, taller than is taller than. But as for beauty, I may consider short hair to be beautiful. Another person may consider long hair. Even my own self, I may decide that now what is beautiful is short hair. The next two years, I want long hair. The next, I want Sakura with big earrings. Because beauty lies in the eyes of the beholder. It's a subjective term. Corrupt, polite, evil, good. And I have said, I think I said that also in the video. If I wear earrings, and I think it is good, it is good because I think so. Good, the word good. The Adventist may not believe in that. You see, he may not think it is good. They think, no, 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 it's not good. So it's bad to wear earrings. The point I'm, I'm making is the same brother that is here is a good, he's a really good guy. Why well, ask the lady that let him? He doesn't think he's a good guy at all. So good, bad, wrong, corrupt, polite, beautiful, terms like that. Value-oriented terms that place quality on them. Okay. Ah, uh, when you introduce them into an expression, the expression becomes what a value judgment. So yes, it is a statement, but the first one I gave you, ama is taller than Adwa, is an objectively true or objectively false statement. By sensory observation. We are able together, with the easiest of the land, we are able together to assess the truth or falsity. Regardless of our cultural background, our opinions, the way we perceive things, they, they don't come in. You may hate the person, but taller than party, <laughs> it is not how you feel about the person, it is about the object. That type of statement, now we are dealing with types of statements. Look on the screen, types of declarity, that's what we are dealing with. They all have a truth value. But factual statements have what? Objective truths. It means the truth or falsity doesn't de depend on the speaker, his background, his values, his op op opinions. No, 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 no. It is in the object. It is raining right now at Nungwa. That's a purely factual statement. It can be factually true or factually false. How do we determine that? If we want to examine, establish whether it is true or false, we observe. What I see, the other person will see, the other person will see, because it is not about what I feel or my opinion or my value. I've said that over and over again. So factual statements are one type of statement. 
Then the one that is connected to the speaker's values, culture, maybe religious persuasion, what have you. In other words, I am prescribing what I think should be. That one is the one we call value judgment. So Kofi is uh, more handsome than this. This government is more so so and so. Uh, the, the example I use is more corrupt than the previous. If I say that, it depends on where it stands. You won't have a chorus answer, true, or a chorus answer, false. You hear true, false, false, true. That will even beat you up, also, and so on, because you are using a value term. If I say Nanado is uh, the president of Ghana, Nanado is shorter than the ex president of Ghana, uh, John Mahama. What are your MPP or NDC? Achim or Dagomba, whatever. It is true, factually, that Nana Adudanka Akupari, a current president. It may be another Nana Adudanka, so you have to qualify. That's what I'm qualifying. But Nana Adudanka Akupari, the current president of Ghana, is shorter than uh, John Dramani Mahama, the previous president of Ghana. That is true, to factually speaking. But if I had said uh, John Dramani Mahama, the president, the ex president of Ghana, is more corrupt than Nana Adudanka the current president of Ghana. You think that we will have a chorus answer. So if you are a panelist, you are in, an investigator, you are a researcher, and you are gathering data to be analyzed later, you get to level four and you do data analysis. You should be concerned about where you are getting the feedback from because it can be value oriented. That's all the point we are showing you. They you don't want to say, oh, people say, oh, they will vote for uh, Hillary Clinton. And you start calling her, Madam President, Madam President, until the votes come in. And lo and behold, in a comfortable lead, who did the analysis? <laughs> I'm trying to show you. So you have to distinguish factual statements, factually true or factually false, from what? Value judgment. They are all giving you information, truth. But some have tainted truth. It depends on who is speaking because of the terms they are using. Then others, you can objectively analyze. Then the third type of statement, apart from factual statement, value judgment, the third one is what? Definitions. Definitions are the, the type of statement that give you what? The meaning of an unknown word. You don't know something, then I make it meaningful to you. Look, e levy e levy You see what our minister and, and the folks are now doing? It's what giving meaning. They are defining. That's what is going on now from one place I think it was Cape Coast then to, uh, to its mean is definition. All the learning we are learning is good. When we finish, we have to make it meaningful to people. I said some of a few of those in my introduction. Making meaning to people. Otherwise, people will reject good things. They will crucify the savior. I'm telling you, because it's not meaningful to them. So it is important. It's not just, I don't want you to just come and learn definendum definient, ostensive. Operational, this true and poor pass and forget. No, 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 no. This one you, you pass it straightforward by the grace of God, I believe. But you, the course must impact you, then you carry it along and use it for the purpose for which it has been made a requirement. Otherwise, we are all wasting our time. Okay, so it's not for you're not studying or engaging to pass exam B and Google. No, we want people to go and if they are policy makers, when we sleep, we sleep peacefully, we will, we will not be sold out. Before they append their signature to anything, they will ask critical questions, they will review, they will contribute, they will solve problems, not just join the fray, okay, friends. So I'm back, I'm rolling back. Definitions are the third type. The part that you don't know, when you have a definition, the word that I don't know, the technical term, there it comes, is a big bomb, get ready. Definition do. Definition do. So if I say, Pollination is the transfer of pollen grains from the anther to the stigma. That, that one will work for the science to okay. Then I would have given you a definition. Okay. Pollination, look at example two on the screen. Pollination is the transfer of pollen grains from the anther to the stigma. And I've given you a definition. You will see that I'm trying to give you the meaning of a certain word. So you don't know pollination. And I say to understand pollination, Look at what, what happens when pollen grains are transferred from the anther of a stigma, uh, from of a flower to its stigma. This, uh, this is a, a technical definition. I think it's what physics is. Eh? 
or botanical, whatever it is. So you don't know pollination. The technical name for the word you don't know is what? Definition do, see it on the screen. Then the one, the part of the definition you know is called what? Definition. And they are sharing right now, let that one enter your head so that I don't have to go and revise again. Definition has two parts. Definition do and definition. The part you don't know, a bachelor on the screen now. A bachelor is an unmarried adult. So a bachelor is what? Definition do. Unmarried adult male is what? Definition. The two come together to form definition. And so factual statement, value judgment, and definition. Those are the three types of what? Declaratives or the three types of statements. I'm so done. When we did value judgment in the, in the video recording, you see that I typed on moral and non-moral. So some of the times you, you judge, if I say it's a corrupt uh, lecture, it's a, it's a corrupt lecture. That is what a value judgment, and it has moral implications. Being a corrupt lecture is a moral issue. She, so it's a value judgment, and it even goes further into what morality, moral value judgment. So if I say that is a good car. Hey, yeah, you bought a good car. This is a good car, this car. I'm using good, so it's a value judgment. But I'm not, I mean, being a good car is not a moral issue, like life and death. So this one is a non-moral value judgment, but it's still a value judgment because of the introduction of good. All right. Someone read what we have on the screen quickly. We'll use the last five minutes so that people can rest. I need a very good reader to read. <laughs> Types of declarations. Um, yeah, is it a giant? Yes, it's me. Let's take <laughs> Let's see if we have alternative hands. Is someone interested in reading? Otherwise, we let you yes. yes, madam. Okay, so I see Judith and Regina. Let Regina read the current slide. And Judith, right, sure. the slide. Okay, okay, thank okay. you. Thank you so much. Read, my dear. So, types of declaratives. One, factual statement. There are three different types of declarative sentences. Factual statement, value judgment, and definitions. So we're taking the factual statement. Factual statement informs by objectively describing what is their true sense observation. Example, one, the bachelor sitting under the tree is sleeping. Two, the president is taller than his opponent. Three, the car knocked down the boy. Four, Ama is a girl. Five, water boils at 800 degrees Celsius. So note before, a statement may be factually true or factually false. Being factual does not mean it is true. It means the truth or falsity of the statement does not depend on the subject's viewpoint, but on the object itself. Thank you very much. Definitely done. Thank you so much. Now, my dear Judith, please read the next slide, and I can now contrast how reporters, if there are people who want to be journalists amongst you or are actors or whatever, you see something happen. Report the fact. Let people introduce their values. Don't come and give us your opinion about what happened, unless the, the show or the event is opinionated, you see that? So if I'm a reporter, I'm a journalist, or I'm passing by something happened, I want to tell uh, the, the authorities that you say, oh, a car knocked down as, as someone who looks like a schoolboy. Don't even say a schoolboy, because you might not even be in school. There's too much hey, opinion. So you don't allow people to have the fact. I get worried about it a little. The boss sat that lazy secretary of his. You, you are not privy to anything that has gone on. No, who have label lazy. <laughs> Today I've defended the system. So next week I'll be on you and I'll be on the bad side. The boss and the innocent, you see the innocent driver uh, uh, knocked, you know, the, the wicked driver knocked down the innocent school. This is not a factual statement. Now you understand why. And the person is reporting how they beat that innocent grandma to death. Are you the one to determine who is innocent or who is not? Say that an elderly woman of the age X has been beating up to death by brothers 
aging, you know, ranging between describe what you are seeing. Don't put your opinions inside. Don't say they killed that wicked grandma who has been eating up people there, chewing them. That is also wrong. But don't also say they killed an innocent grandma. You know, innocent. <laughs> All right. Mm -hmm. right. Auntie uh, Judith, please read the last but We're almost done. Uh, hold on a little for us. Go on, Auntie. Oh, please, um, she just read what's on our screen. That's factual statement. Okay. All right. So, value judgment. Value judgment informs by subjectively prescribing or evaluating how something or someone should or ought to be. They do not state facts about the object but rather express the viewpoint of the subject. Example one, that bachelor has a good conscience. Two, this knife has a good edge. Three, it is wrong to talk back at your supervisor. Four, Amma is a beautiful girl. Five, the wicked driver knocked down the innocent boy. Six, the president is more corrupt than his opponent. Seven, he is a good boxer. I'm done, please. Yes, indeed. One of your colleagues called, so I had to uh, multitask. Apologies. Yes, okay. thank you. So now, yeah. you see. This is why I don't like your course. So if you can avoid it, it will help. But sometimes it's urgent. Not to worry. Please see the uh, point three that Lady Judith read. It could have been this. It is uh, you. Uh, you talk back at your supervisor. If I said you talk back at your supervisor, that would be factual. I'm stating a fact that when your supervisor said you shouldn't have done, you also said oh, you shouldn't. Uh, so you you talked back when she talked. When he talked, then he also talked. I'm just describing what it is. It's a factual matter. But if I say it is not good to talk back at your supervisor, I have gone beyond just telling you uh, uh, what I saw. I'm making a judgment of it, which is, which is what I'm prompting. Okay, so sometimes we are informing people, but in the information is tainted, either positively or negatively, with what? Our opinion, our viewpoint. And as critical minds, you should distinguish what factual statement from what the value one. Amma is a girl. That should be what objectively verifiable. It's a, it's a matter of fact out there. Not the name. Even if I say Kofi is a girl, it's a factual statement. In our, in our setting, it should be factually what false for Kofi to be a girl. But Amma is a girl, Claudia, is factually true. But expressions are what factual i think you understand why now because it has objective it doesn't depend on the observer there is no value term in it but if i say amma is a beautiful girl it is no longer a matter of fact i think we've gone through that the wicked driver has not done the innocent but look at wicked innocent do you know how another reporter report the same thing the smart driver not down that witch of a boy <laughs> who crosses path. <laughs> so if you if you start introducing value terms when you have not been asked your opinion, you you don't report fact. The president is more corrupt than his opponent. You that is your view, whichever president you have in mind, and so on and so forth. We have done all of that. Then the two types of value judgment that I, I prompted: moral and non-moral. See them on the screen. Then the definitions the definitions you said the definition can either be true or all these are there you don't have to go through all that then the parts of a definition definition doom definitions you have seen some sentence fragment you see sentences that are that is the vice chancellor complete full stop and is a graduate complete full stop set up why are you crying these are examples of sentences. They are sentences, yes, but they are not statements. Where will you place set up, please? I want a, a hand to answer that. Lady Reverend, was there a question, please, or you are responding? 
When I say set up, why will you place it? I see Jessica, I see Elliot, I see Irene. Any one of you or anyone who wants to answer? Doris, Doris J, your hand just went up. Wow, the hands are many. I've not seen all. <laughs> Anybody answer? We are done. Sit up. Madam, please, it's a command. Very good. Well, under the broadcast, we will put it under imperative. Well done. So it is just a sentence that it is not a statement. Okay. Uh, why are you crying? Interrogative. I'm sure you know that. Okay. Then I ask you to re refer to the recommended text for references and several exercises to help you do fine. May I ask you a tricky question? I hope that it will help you to sum it all up. Then we are done. And to God, we'll be meeting next week. You can join any of the links all the time, okay? Just make sure that you're consistently following up the platform so that your lecture can build you up from one level to the other until all the 10 units. But you can have uh, content from all the places. I'm giving you three example uh, types of statements. Then you show me which is which. So the first one, a bachelor is sitting under the tree. That's my first one. A bachelor is sitting under the tree. Then the second one, a bachelor has a good conscience. Judith read that for us. Bachelor has a good conscience. That's the second one. Then the third one, a bachelor is an unmarried adult male. So I've given you three. A bachelor is sitting under the tree. That's one. Two, a bachelor has a good conscience. That's two. Then the third one, a bachelor is an unmarried adult male. How will you describe which type of uh, statement is the first one? A bachelor is sitting under the tree. Which type? All of us. Bachelor statement. Very good. Is that the answer everybody was going to give? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Okay, if you didn't know that, you know. Lady uh, the Dr. Answer. Dr. Nancy, yes, I'm please. not going to um, give the answer to the factual. The person sitting under the tree is a bachelor. Is it because uh -huh. the person is not wearing a ring? In our culture, you don't have to always put a ring on your finger. Exactly. Not at all. If, if it is factual, yeah. it can be factually true or factually false. You see that? Yeah. So it could be that the person sitting there, looking young and smallish and what have you, has three children in the home time, two, and then three are also on their way coming. <laughs> and, they are, and he has wives. But, but even so, the statement will still be a factual thing. The factual just means it doesn't depend on us. We can test it objectively. So it can be factually true or false. Or factually false. I hope that helps. Yes, uh -huh. so yes it's madam. Factual. So when we say it's factual, it doesn't mean we are saying it is actually true. We ask two questions like that. If the statement is factual, then it, it, it is true. Ooh, factual means we can objectively ascertain truth or falsity. So it can be factually true. If I say it is raining right now at the one campus, that is a factual thing. But it is factually false because I'm here now. It's not raining. But the next minute, it could be factually objective. Then the second one, I said a bachelor has a good conscience. Please, is it factual value or definition? All of us. And the third one, very good. And the third I said, um, a bachelor is a married adult male. Definition. Definition. Which is the definition of our definition amongst the three? What's the definition? The bachelor. The bachelor. bachelor. You see what I do? You see how you answer? This is our Pasco. So you will do fine. <laughs> you will do very fine. We are so done. And we captured, I think, from pages one to maybe uh, 22 or 23 of your test. More part. And then, God willing, pray. God will hello, hello. Good afternoon, madam. Yes, sir. Hello, good afternoon, madam. That I'm done. So yeah, is it is it here, yeah, please, Peter? Yes, Hi. madam. Any got a masala too? Madam. Please, that is our, our, our tutor, Mr. Ajay. So if you have 
all concerns, you can route it through him. It will get to us. Then we can assist you. I want to log out so that he can engage you. I'm sure he has one or two, the last five minutes. Dr. Then, Dr. Nancy, before you yes, log please. out. Yes. Before you log out, I'm kindly yes. requesting the help of the party. Yes. Last question, please. I'll take the question. Don't worry. You want to pray for Dr. Nancy and for all of us as a request? Is that okay? Before our children. Father, in Jesus' name, we are grateful unto you for our first uh, meeting online. Thank you. Lecturer, Dr. Nancy, pray for grace, for strength, teach us clarity of speech. We pray committing all of us as key education Let the wisdom of understanding fall upon us so we will and clarity be able to write pipe test exams. Keep us protect us for this week until we meet again. Jesus. Amen. 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 Hello, Amen. Um, and I also have a question I want to ask first, please. Yes, please go ahead. I can spend one yes, minute. Yes, please. Um, yeah. What I want to ask is actually based on how things are being like manipulated our campus, especially the course dates and then the the time of meeting online and stuff. We've yes. had almost about three different, like, you know, uh, uh, um, let's say, um, how will I even put it? Oh, I take your time, put it, yeah. Yeah, we've had about um, three different, like, um, is it old? oh as like or? as like the lecture no, not, yes as like three different timetables yes let me put it that way from three where? different timetables please from oh, where? yeah from on, that on this, 